post some of them to YouTube so that you'll be able to re-watch the class if you want to in case you want to review something that we may have covered briefly and you wanted to hear it again or if you happen to miss class one day you'd have a chance to possibly go on YouTube and find it again. I might not always record it but I'll try to do it most times. Okay, so next we're going to look at our Okay, so we're going to review real quick um, and then move on to the new material. Can I erase the board? Oh, yeah, that would be great. Thanks. Okay, so we're going to start by. just say them together as we click through, and then we're going to re um, review in random order also before we go on to the new material. Okay, so this is A, E, U, E, O, Ka, Ki, U, K, Ko, Sa, Shi, Su, She, So, Ta, Chi, Su, Te, To, Na, Ni, Nu, Ne, No, Ha, Ki, Hu, He, Ho, Ma, Mi, Mu, Ne, Mo. Okay, we're going to leave it there for a minute and do the flashcards in random order. So, let's see how many people can remember. Ho, good. This one is Hu, Ha, Ke. Okay. Say it out loud. If you don't know it immediately, say it after everybody else. That's okay too, but. Say it so that you're practicing. Ku, mu, good. To, good. Ne, ne, good. Mi, yes. Ki, alright. Chi, good. Ko, se, good. A, ta. made flashcards already and tried the method at home. You've got an app. All right. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. So we finished all the way through mall. By the way, the order that we just demonstrated with the chart and that these are in in my PowerPoint is also alphabetical order for things like paper dictionaries and the glossary in the back of your textbook. So it's really useful to know your chart in order for multiple reasons. Hey, is that chart on Canvas? Can we print it out? Um, we make, like, a the, the blank, yes, the blank is okay. on Canvas. It's an Excel spreadsheet. It's in, um, I think it's in the module that I labeled warm-up exercises. Okay. And yes, you're free to print it off. And there's actually three sheets because I did separate sheets for some of the other sections of hiragana that we're going to be going on to today. Okay. So we'll, we'll introduce those. 
Okay, so there's mole. Okay, so starting again, we have ya, and then we skip yi. There is no symbol for yi, and it goes to you, and then we skip ye. There's no symbol for ye, and we go to yo. So you may have noticed when we had the chart up a little while ago that there were gaps, there were blank spots. Did everybody notice those? So there, those are sounds that logically should exist based on the chart format, but they actually don't exist in modern Japanese. They may have existed at some point in Japan's past, but they don't exist now and they don't use any symbols to represent those sounds because they don't use those sounds. Okay, so Yayu and Yo are the only three Ys. Okay, so we're going to go through the Ys real quick in the hot part form. Ya, Yu, and Yo. Okay, and it's almost impossible to shuffle these, but we'll try. So this is Yo, Yu, Ya. Okay, and now I'm just going to kind of randomly stick them in here. And trying to shuffle these a little bit so they're at least in a different order than they were a minute ago when we did them. Okay, let's try this. So, oh, 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 you, is helping everyone to learn these well because I want you guys to have a really good foundation and then be able to start reading real words real soon. Okay, so we did yayu yo. Now we're doing the da group. So this this is a sound that's a little different from English. Most of our consonants so far have been sounds that exist in English also, right? This one, it's sort of like you're putting your tongue sort of where you would put it for an L, but you're trying to say an R, or maybe your tongue is a little bit between where it would be for L and R, somewhere along those lines. So it's not ra, ri, ru, re, ro, that's English R. It's not la, li, lu, le, lo, that's English L, right? It's la, li, lu, le, lo. It's a little bit back from where the L is. If you're, if you're feeling where you put an L in your mouth, when you say la, your tongue is like right behind your top teeth, right? If you bring it back just a little to like the gums above your top teeth, la, li, lu, le, lo, that's about where this Japanese L or R is. So it's a little bit different. Okay. A lot of other languages have a different LR sound than we have. And Japanese people find it dif difficult to differentiate between English L's and R's because their la language has a sound that kind of splits the difference. Okay, so la li lu de lo, like that. Okay, you ready? So this is. La, li, lu, le, ro. Okay? And one thing I also want to point out is on the li, this font 
shows it with a connection here, but it's very common to see V written with two separate lines like that. Okay, this is probably the more common structure. That would be considered cursive. Okay, same thing with Ra actually. Ra also, this font shows it with a connection, but most people actually write it disconnected like that. Two lines instead of one. Okay. Some people look, think it looks like a sort of disconnected five. Okay. With the top line being at a, an angle instead of straight across. Okay, so la, li, du, re, ro. Okay, so let's do those real quick. So I want you to, you know, let me know if you've got problems or questions with stuff, okay? Okay, so we did la li du de do. Now we're coming to another line that has gaps in it. So we've got this one, which is wa, okay, it's the top of the column. And then we've got three gaps. And then we go all the way down here to, you would think it would be wo, right? And some dialects, they still do put more of a W sound on it, but a lot of times it gets spelled in Romaji as W in parentheses, O, because the pronunciation of it is more like O. It's actually, in pronunciation, very much like this O, but at the other end of the alphabet. And it's in the Wa column because Presumably in ancient Japanese it was pronounced wo. And like I said, some dialects still do that, but standard Japanese pronounces it as o. And the reason they kept both letters, even though they're the same sound, is this one serves a different function. Whereas this o is part of vocabulary words like ohio, which means the morning. Okay. This O is a grammar structure particle. It's actually a particle that indicates whatever's here is the object of your sentence. Okay. So it's actually what they call an object marker. 
and it has no other function in the language except to mark an object. Okay, so sometimes to distinguish between them, they'll call this the regular O and this the particle O. Particle is the term we use in English to indicate the kinds of grammar structures that Japanese has that do things like mark what the object is, mark what the subject is, mark the destination when you're using a destination verb like go or come or return. Um, there, there are grammar particles in Japanese that serve these functions. We don't have an equivalent in English. English doesn't have any such thing. Okay? Mostly the languages that have these are languages that are in some distant way related to Japanese, like Korean and Mongolian and a few others. Okay? So grammar particles are something that we're going to be talking about a lot. Every chapter, pretty much, grammar particles are going to come up again as, you know, here's a new one, or here's a new way to use an old one, or here's more practice with them at the very least. Okay, so that's the wa column. It's just wa, blank, 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 wo. Okay, so that's o, particle o. Okay, and then our final letter in the whole basic character set is Mm. And this is our only standalone consonant. So it normally gets written at the top of the chart in its own separate column, all by itself, but it does get put in that top um, spot just because that's where things start. They always start from the top. When you're writing traditional Japanese, it goes this direction from the right to the left in columns, vertical columns. So they actually start writing at the top of the line and go down, and then the next line and go down like that. That's how traditional Japanese is written. And if any of you are manga fans, you will have noticed that manga often open from the back by English standards, even if they're printed in English. But Japanese ones not only open from the side, the typeface is also done vertically. Okay, and Japanese novels and magazines generally are also vertical. Here's from top to bottom. Top to bottom. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's our final character. Mm, and it is, like I said, the only one that's a standalone consonant. There's no vowel attached to this one. None of the others can say that, right? So, and you may or may not have noticed that in Japanese, Words always end with either a vowel sound or an N. There are no other consonants that a Japanese word can end with. And if they're transcribing something like McDonald's into Japanese, they can't do like the C and the D next to each other or the L and the D next to each other. They can't pronounce that. There's no way to represent that in Japanese script. So it comes out as maku do naru do. <laughs> Crazy, right? McDonald's sounds like maku do naru do in Japanese. Okay. And sometimes they shorten it because it's a pain in the neck to say all that, so they call it maku do for short. But anytime you've got two consonants together creating that kind of a sound that Japanese doesn't have, then what they do is they um, put vowel sounds in between. Very often, e or u sounds are the most common. Okay, so there's your n. So that is what they call the basic 46 sounds of Japanese. Those are the basic ones. Now we're going to get into extra ones. That these are the ones that, in English, they call them diacritical marks, meaning little extra marks that change the existing character. You'll notice I changed fonts as well. This is easier to see it this way. If 
you look in the front of your textbook, uh, not the very front, but uh, let's see what page was that. The last page of Japanese writing system stuff. Or mm -hmm. Was it 25? Yeah. Mm, no, that's not it. Oh, 23. There you go. Yeah, if you look at page 23, where they show textbook font, mincho, gothic, and handwriting, well, here's an example of gothic. Okay, so it's a little different looking. And let's see. The projector is doing something weird. I don't know why. Oh, okay, that's better. So now you're not getting a weird black area on your head. So this, does everybody recognize what this would be without the extra little lines? Ka, okay? So because it is ka when it's by itself, what happens is all of them follow a pattern. So all of the K sounds, when you add these two little dots, they turn into a, anybody know? G, G sound, yes. All the Ks convert to Gs, OK? So it's pretty easy once you know ka ki ku ke ko, then you just have to convert to ga gi gu ge go, right? So there's a pattern there that you can use to help yourself learn these. And the other ones that do that, S's change to Z's, with one exception. We'll talk about, yeah, she, because it's an SH sound, not just a straight S, instead of changing to a Z sound, it's more like a J sound. So she becomes G, okay? Um, so S-H-I changes to J-I, okay? And then um, T's convert to D's, again, with a couple of special exceptions because we've got Chi and Su, right? So Chi becomes G also, and Su becomes Zu, which kind of... Sorry. Okay, Zoo becomes Zoo, which is also kind of a repeat of one of the ones in the S's. So there are some special characters. These two special ones are less commonly used than their sound equivalents in the Z column. Okay, so when it comes to spelling vocabulary words, if you're not sure which G or which Zoo to use, 90% of the time it's these guys, the, the S to Z ones, okay? So that's something to be aware of, okay? So let's go ahead and go through our, um, oh, we forgot to do our flashcards with wa o n, and then we will start looking at our Gs and others. Okay, so this one is wa, this one is o, and this one is Mm. Okay, this one is O, this one is mm. this one is wa. Okay, I'm going to shuffle these in again.
just because I thought it would be good for you guys to get comfortable reading more than one font. Okay, so this is ga, di, gu, ge, and go. Okay, so and again, um, just being aware that the, the differences, like the key being able to be written with the curve or with a separation that carries over. So D can also be written this way instead of that way. Both both options are equally good for D, just like they are for key. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Okay, so this one is D go. comes next? Za. Okay. And actually in the dictionary, the uh, ka is followed directly by the ga stuff. And then ki, gi, ku, hu, like that. But for learning purposes, I find it's good to learn all the basic ones. And then if you've already got ka, ki, ku, ke, ko memorized, 
then Gavi Bugegel isn't that hard to pick up. And the same thing with Sashi Suzezo first, and then Zaji Suzezo is not so hard to pick up. Okay, so here we have Za, G. Okay, so this is our, our exception one, right? G, and then Zu, Ze, Zo. Good. Okay. Everybody um, able to understand the weird font? or problems? Okay. And Brian, you said you'd learned some of these before, so you, you probably are okay with what you missed today. Okay, good. So let's go on. So after Zaji Zuzezo, the next group is going to be? Ta changes to? Da. da. So Da. Everybody, Da. 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 G. G. Zu. De, do. Okay, so once again we have the, the oddball ones converting differently than the rest. But so do, do, do is nice. G, G, G good. Zu, de, de and da. da. Okay. Da, da do. do.
Japanese person you ask, okay? And those become, anybody know? Bs, yes. So Hs become Bs with the two little dots, the ten ten. And Hs become Ps with the little circles, okay? So the only ones that have the little circles are the P sounds, okay? So if you get to one of the um, ones with a little circle on it and you get stuck on, oh, what does that come from? What does that convert from? Don't even worry about it. Just know that this little circle is a P. Always. Okay? And that should help. So we're going to look at B's and P's before we integrate them into the rest of the call. Oh, first we're going to look at them this way. So this is Ba. Okay, everybody? Ba. ba. B, bu, be, bo. Okay, and pa, pi, pu, pe, po. Okay, everybody understand those? Okay, so let's try it. So this is be, ba, bo, bu, and b. Peas and then we'll combine them. Pretty good? Yeah. All right. And if you can 
do the, um, the style that I told you about on Tuesday, that helps to personalize it. So you don't have to go through this whole pack every time. If there are certain ones that you've got down cold, go through them once, remind yourself of it for the day, and then you can set it aside and focus your energy on the ones that you keep blanking on. And a, another good way to practice is that um, blank chart that I um, had up at the beginning of class that is on Canvas for you to download if you want it. Download it, print it off, put it, um, fill it out as much as you can without help first. Like fill in just as much as you can from memory. Change pen colors and fill out the remaining ones with help. And then you've got a color-coded view of which ones you still need help remembering and which ones you've got down cold. Because if you can remember it and write it from memory, then you've got it, right? But if you know it when you see it, but you still can't remember how to write it without seeing it first, then you still have work to do in terms of memorizing it as well as you need it to be, right? Because the goal here is to get to the point where I can say, Ohio Vazimas, and you can guys can just write out Oha Yo U Go Za I Ma Su. No problem, right? If you can't do that yet, then you need more practice. Okay? So yeah. This is da. Yes. Uh -huh. these little combination guys, okay? So what you will notice about these, and the chart for them is the front of your book. This orange chart is here. You'll notice that the 
basic 46 are the first piece of the chart. The diacritical marks are the second piece of the chart. They separated them out, make it easier to see. And then the third piece of the chart are these special combinations. Okay? And even here, they separated the ones without diacritical marks and the ones with diacritical marks. Even though when you go into alphabetical order, if you're looking something up in a dictionary, the cause and gauze will be together, the keys and geese will be together, and then the cues and you know, the kya kyu kyo and kya kyu go will also be integrated in with the k's and g's. Okay, so they go in order like that, but for learning purposes, sometimes it's helpful to separate them out. Okay, so what you'll notice here is all the combinations start with a consonant sound that's in the E row. Okay, if you, if you look at the chart, the original chart, you'll see that they're arranging them in columns this way, but in Japanese they would be, in um, traditional structure, they'd be like the chart we had up at the beginning of class this morning. So you'll notice that all the combinations start with ki or shi or chi or ni or he or mi or ri or gi, ji, b, p. They actually skip this g because they've already got a g. Okay, they don't use the other g for any of the combinations. Okay, so do you see that? Do you see that all the combinations start from the e vowels, right? Consonants that end in an E vowel sound, right? And so that makes it easy to know which consonant to use because you don't have to choose which of these five am I supposed to use for this combination. It's always going to be the ones in the E grouping, right? Okay, so, and the way they spell them in Romaji is to replace that E, which is an I in English, with a Y, and then the vowel of the Y piece. But in Japanese, they write it with a large ki, for example, and a small ya. So the difference you're getting is if you write it with a full-size ki and a full-size ya, that is ki ya. Okay? If you write it with a full-size ki and a small ya, which is also usually down a little bit, so that if you're writing on notebook paper, it would cross the line on the bottom. Okay, that is kya, not kya, but kya. Okay, you see the difference? You hear the difference? It's an important distinction. There are places in Japanese where both of them are words. So, for example, kyo versus kyo. Um, Kyoko could be a girl's name. Kyoko is a different girl's name. Okay? They're entirely different. Different kanji, different meaning. To Japanese people, two very distinct sounds. We might have a hard time distinguishing them. They don't. So if we miss them up, they're like, what the heck are you saying? You know? <laughs> It's kind of like for us, the L's and R's are so easily distinguishable, but to them, not so much. So that's where you get things like English.com, which is about all kinds of flubbed English, <laughs> mostly from East Asian sources. Yeah. English? English.com, spelled with an R, and it's hilarious. <laughs> if you just need a laugh sometime, <laughs> Um, but, yeah, you will hear Japanese people say, I study English, <laughs> because that's the best pronunciation they can manage yet. You know, when they study longer, they eventually get better at it. Okay, but anyway, so we have, this is kya, okay? And you're going to write it just like you're writing a regular T, and then just make your ya a little bit smaller and a little bit lower down. Okay, so that's kya, 
Everybody say it with me. Kya. Q. Q. And notice that for now, they're relatively short sounding, but then if you add another vowel after it, you can make those long sounds. And we'll talk about long sounds in just a little bit. So, kya, kyu, kyo. Gya. Gyu. Gyo. So I grouped them this way because we just finished learning which ones convert to what with diacritical marks, right? Mm -hmm. So I figured the combination should be pretty easy to handle now that we just practiced it. So we have kya, kyu, oh, this is gyo, yep, kya, and then gyo. This is gyu, this is kyu. This is kyo, and this is ya. Okay, so everybody get the idea of how these work? Okay, not too hard, right? So, and shuffling six is a little bit better than shuffling three. <laughs> okay, so gyu, kyu, kya, kyo, kyo, and ya. Okay. Now we're going to work these in. Finishing with hiragana. Okay, so our next grouping is going to be sha, sha shu, 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 How many of you have heard ja in Japanese, like in anime or something? Have you run across that before? Now you know how to spell it. <laughs> So here we have it. Ja. Ju. Ju. Sho. Yeah. Sho, right? 
through with our chart here. We have cha chu cho. Cha chu cho. And you'll notice that they don't normally do a ja ju jo. So just because three at a time seems so short, well, let's also do a few more. So cha chu cho and nya nyu nyo. Nya, by the way, nya nya is the onomatopoeia in Japanese for a cat's meow. Instead of meow meow, they say nya nya. I always thought that was fun to know. <laughs> There's a lot of onomatopoeia, by the way, in Japanese. So this one is cha, cho, chu, nyo, nya. Okay, let's do this. So, and 
anybody have any questions while I'm sorting cards? So, does everybody have a plan in place for how they're going to continue studying these with flashcards or a flashcard app or an app? Whatever's portable is good yeah. <laughs> because you'll find that you learn it better if you study every day. And everybody's got such busy lives these days, so you're a lot better off with something you can take with you and do whenever you have a few minutes. So um, in general, that's what seems to work the best for almost everyone have something you can take with you and practice every chance you get. Okay, so this one is so, so. so. Close guys, this is all the stack that's left. Yes. Yay. Yay. Okay, so this is Xia, Hu, Hyo, and then predictably Ya, Yu, Byo, and Ya, Hu, Pyo. Right? So we can group those together. Check these out. So yeah. we've got Pia, Pia, Yo, Yu, Hyo, 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 and Ya. Okay. Okay. So, feeling good, everybody? 
those last three are hard for almost every American to pronounce. You just kind of have to live with it, get used to it, do your best with it. Don't kill yourself if you can't do it very well. Okay, we'll talk about, okay, let's just go ahead and talk about these two. So this is called particle wa. Okay, it looks like a ha when it's being used as a grammar particle. Remember we mentioned grammar particles earlier? What was the grammar particle we already learned oh, earlier? O. Oh. So the particle O happens to be its own special character. So it's easy to identify. Oh, that's the particle O because it's obviously not the other O, right? The other particles in Japanese are regular hiragana. And two of them happen to be pronounced differently when they're functioning as a particle than they're pronounced the rest of the time. The others, you'll figure out from context that it's meant to be a particle and not the last syllable of a word. These two, you have to pay attention to, yes, it's the particle, not the last syllable of the word. And by the way, it gets pronounced differently. So ha, when it's being used as a particle, gets pronounced like wa, OK? And the other one is he, when it's being used as a particle, it gets pronounced like e. Okay? So those are the two, particle wa and particle e. Those are the only two particles, and the only two letters in the whole alphabet, actually, that ever get pronounced differently from their normal pronunciation. Everything else in the whole language is pronounced phonetically the way it looks. Isn't that nice? <laughs> Think about English. How many times do we have crazy spellings that get pronounced differently from what they look like? Laundromat. What's that? Laundromat. Laundromat, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't mean. Yeah. There are zillions of them, right? Think about right and bright and through and though. They're not even pronounced the same. They've got the, the same word spelling and different sounds, right? Japanese is much more consistent, partly because they modernized their spellings back in the late 40s, early 50s during the US occupation. Basically, the American GIs were finding it almost impossible to learn Japanese. And the people in charge of the occupation said to the Japanese government, why don't you modernize your writing system? It's kind of crazy. And they had just been defeated in a war, so they were in the mood to cooperate. <laughs> so as my one sensei told me, the Japanese people said, hi, hi, and they did. <laughs> so change enacted almost immediately. So those are the only two inconsistent spellings we have to worry about. OK, so let's review. So this is mu. Mia, Mio, Rio, Liu, Lia, Particle Wa, and Particle E. Okay, so when I label them like this, Particle Wa, Particle E, get pronounced the particle way. If you see them as a standalone, you're going to still call them Ha and He. And then in context, when we start learning how to use these particles, I will point them out to you until you get comfortable with figuring out for yourself when it's the particle and when it's the normal pronunciation. Okay? So, and that comes with practice. So it's just a matter of practicing and you will get it. Okay? And later, as we learn to read kanji, you will find that Particles are always left in hiragana. So it becomes a lot easier to identify them when the noun is in kanji, then there's a particle in hiragana. Then there's an adjective partially in kanji with a the hiragana ending, and then you know a verb with a hiragana ending. You know, certain things are always in hiragana, certain things convert to kanji commonly. So um, we will do one more run through of hiragana as individual letters. And then we're going to start reading some groupings of hiragana to practice a few words. Okay, so we're going to actually get started on some words today. 
and then for homework, you'll be continuing to practice your Hiragana and hopefully also getting to read some of the vocabulary words and start practicing. And the vocabulary words are also on your CDs. So a good way to practice your reading practice is to read along with the CD as well as trying to read without listening to the CD. So do both. You can listen to the CD and follow along with your finger on the hiragana. You can also listen to the CD and then try to repeat it back. And you can also try to read without listening to the CD and then check yourself, use the CD like an answer key, read it out loud first, and then listen to that one to see if you pronounce it right, and then pause the CD real quick, and read the next one out loud, and then play the next one to see if you read it correctly. You can use the CDs in all kinds of cool ways to practice. Okay, so let's run through quick. The, the,
next show, and we're going to look at Wimbledon shoes. That's the one I want to open. Okay, so I started with. Oh, this is. Okay, let's start it from the beginning instead of the end. Okay, so Wimbledon shoe. Okay, so I grouped them. So we've got vocabulary words that just use the first five, I, U, A, O. Let's see how many of these you guys can read. A, Gyo. Gyo, by the way, is the term that means that column that has the same consonant sound. So like A, I, U, A, O is A, Gyo. Ka, Ki, Ku, Ke, Ko is Ka, Gyo. Okay, that's the, the grouping names. So A, Gyo. So this is pronounced I. I. Notice the pronunciation difference between these two. One extra E, therefore it takes twice as long to pronounce the E sound in this word. So E yet versus E yet. You hear the difference? That's a very important distinction that Japanese makes. These are two different words with two different meanings entirely. Does anyone know ie? Yes. No. It means no, okay? And ie means a house. <laughs> so if somebody asks you a yes or no question, don't answer house, okay? <laughs> Not exactly. The grammar doesn't quite work, but <laughs> ie and ie. So it's very important to give that extra length when there's an extra syllable. Another example of that is this bottom one. E means yes. E as a single syllable means a picture, like a painting on your wall. So e versus e. Very different terms. Okay, very important to make those distinctions. Okay, let's do some kagyo practice. And here, of course, I've integrated agyo and kagyo. So this is akai. Akai, good. Kai. Kuki. Yep. Ho There's another example of those long vowels. Okay. There's e. Koko. Hear the sound difference between koko and koko. Hear the difference? Koi. Okay, after koko we have koi, eki, uki, hao, kiku, kaki, kuho, kiku, and keiko. keiko. Any questions? Okay. You'll notice that in terms of vowels, long o sounds are often spelled o u, like ko ko. It doesn't really sound like ko ko, right? When they when they pronounce it smoothly, it comes out ko ko. Okay. Sagyo practice. Sushi. Sushi. Everybody knows that one now, right? Now you can read it and write it. Okay. Saeko, that's a girl's name. Shio is salt. <laughs> Shika is a deer. Kashi. Asa. Sekai. Koe. Koi. Aki. Oka. Ike. Kaku. So. Soko. Asoko. Tagyo practice, tochi, take, taskete. You'll notice that in certain combinations, S sounds in particular sometimes lose their vowel a little bit when paired with Ks and Ts. S sounds followed by hard consonants. Sometimes the U or the E disappears a little bit. It's still sort of there, but not fully. So, taskete. Instead of tasukete, it's taskete. Okay? 
lessons one and two PDFs are there. So for people who don't have the book on time, I actually scanned as much as I was able to of the content for lessons one and two from the text and the workbook. So you can actually go in there, print off those downloads, and get started on that homework. Don't let the fact that you don't have a book yet keep you from keeping up with class. Okay? So I will see you guys on Tuesday, and we will be reading real vocabulary words. Okay? And starting to learn our vocab and getting into some of the grammar. Okay? So come up there. Yeah. Thank you very much. You're welcome. files there and you guys can I like have it a little better than the other one. Angel, I can get into it. You couldn't, get, you into couldn't it. get it to work for you, huh? No. Canvas is a lot easier for me. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of students are saying that they like Canvas better now that they're used to it. Yeah. There was a learning curve at first, you know. We'll have to get used to it's so different. But, uh, most people call me Johnny. I didn't want to say anything else. Oh, okay. Johnny? Yep. Okay, I'll write that down. So. If you forget, I, I still answer to both. But, yeah. Yeah. It's just a book from the phone. Yeah. Is that your name? Yeah, Johnny. Oh. Okay. First time my mom called me by my name, I didn't know who she was talking to. She let me call Johnny since I was a little kid. Oh, okay. Johnny. <laughs> okay. I will write that down before I forget. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay, no problem. Have a nice day. See you later. So, I'm going to go home. Okay, I'm feeling good. Okay. Thoughts for physical stuff? Uh, I just about? I just had a rough session yesterday. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot of things came out that I don't know how to deal with. Wow. Like you need to talk, you know how to find me. Okay. Thank you. Take care.